So when the Jews are praying here at the Western Wall, they are fulfilling what Solomon requested during this first temple dedication in this verse. But hold on a second. Is the Western Wall evidence that Jesus actually made a mistake? Did Jesus' prophecy of Matthew 24 2 not fully come to pass? We have finally arrived. Welcome to Jerusalem. After 14 reviews all around Israel, the remaining videos from this amazing trip will be centered here around this historic and spiritually significant city. First up, let's visit the Holy Landmark, where devout Jews go to pray and worship daily, the Western Wall. Also referred to as the Wailing Wall, due to the Jews being known to weep at the sight over the destruction of both temples that once stood, although many Jews find the term Wailing Wall offensive. I will only be referring to this beautiful site as the Western Wall. It is divided into two sections. Here on the left is the men's section, and this smaller area on the right is the women's section. This covered raised walkway is the path you take to visit the Temple Mount where the Jewish temple once stood. Today, and since the late 7th century AD, the Muslim Dome of the Rock stands where the Jewish temple once stood. And being that the Muslims control the Temple Mount, no one can pray, worship, carry Bibles, or do anything religious when walking around on top of the Temple Mount unless you are a Muslim. The Western Wall is well known throughout the world. But did you know this is only a small portion of it? This is what we are all familiar with, called the Western Wall Plaza, and it is about 187 feet wide. But from this point, the Western Wall extends further south about 262 feet, which I will talk about further at the end of this video. And then heading north, the Western Wall extends over 1,100 feet. This section is mostly covered up by the residential structures built by the Muslims during the medieval times. The entire Western Wall is about 1,600 feet long. Now, when you enter through this archway, known as Wilson's Arch, you will find a synagogue set right against the Western Wall. This arch is believed to have been a support structure for the bridge leading up to the Temple Mount from the west side during the Second Temple period. There is also further access to some of the hidden portions of the Western Wall by going through the Western Wall tunnels. So why are Jews so devoted to praying here specifically? I believe we have to go back to the builder of the First Temple, King Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 8, where he is dedicating the newly built temple to God. Hear the supplication of your servant and of your people, Israel, when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven, your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. So when the Jews are praying here at the Western Wall, they are fulfilling what Solomon requested during this first temple dedication in this verse. But hold on a second. Is the Western Wall evidence that Jesus actually made a mistake? Did Jesus' prophecy of Matthew 24, 2 not fully come to pass? Let's look at what Jesus said. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 and 2, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things, he asked? Truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. If not one stone here will be left on another, then how do we explain the Western Wall? If you're like me, when I was much younger, I once assumed the Western Wall was part of the temple, but that is in fact not the case. The Western Wall was never part of the temple. It is part of the retaining wall that surrounds the Temple Mount. It was built up by Herod the Great in the late 1st century BC when he doubled the size of the Temple Mount and renovated the existing second temple that Zerubbabel built around 516 BC. So yes, Jesus' words did actually come to pass in 70 AD when Rome ransacked Jerusalem and destroyed the Jewish temple. Now, earlier I mentioned the southern section of the Western Wall. This is a very interesting spot that you may not be familiar with. Along the southwest corner of the Temple Mount is a Herodian street that Jesus and his apostles would have definitely walked on. You can see the rubble along the Western Wall in this section. This is from the top of the ancient wall. Most believe this was what the Romans did in 70 AD during the destruction of Jerusalem. Others believe this was a result of an earthquake in the 4th century AD that caused all this rubble. Regardless, you can see how these stones hit the ground with such force to cause the stone street to buckle. Among the collapsed stones was one which bore a Hebrew inscription, To the place of trumpeting too. This here is only the replica. But in the second temple days, this stone probably marked the place at the top of the southwest corner of the Temple Mount, where the trumpeter announced the beginning and the close of each Sabbath. This portion protruding from the wall is what's left over from the Robinson's Arch. This was another entrance up to the Temple Mount, but what makes this one interesting is that it was part of what is known as the Pilgrim's Road or Eastern Road that started about a half a mile south at the Pool of Siloam. Those traveling to the Temple Mount would purify themselves at the Pool of Siloam and then walk a half a mile journey along this road to get to the temple. 
I'll touch more on this in my future video when I review the Pool of Siloam. One last interesting finding here at the southern part of the Western Wall is this stone with a Hebrew inscription chiseled into it. The inscription actually reads, And you shall see in your heart and shall rejoice, and their bones like grass shall. This verse appears to be coming from Isaiah 66, 14, which reads, You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass, and the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, and he shall show his indignation against his enemies. The circumstances around why this inscription is here is unknown. So this concludes my review of the Western Wall. I hope what I briefly shared gives you new insights into this amazing part of Jewish history that you may not have been aware of. In my next review, I will take you to the Mount of Olives, which sits on the east side of Jerusalem. I will be covering what biblically took place here, and more importantly, what's going to take place here in the future. I hope you'll join me for that. But until then, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless. Music